911, what's your emergency? This is Hank on the old gray road. What is it this time, Hank? It's the Bigfoot again. He's back. He's just standing there. Listening to You Had Me at Bigfoot with your hosts, Tom, <laughs> the Plot Thickens, and Dustin. Think about it. Remember, you can always contact the show via Twitter at You Had Me Podcast, on Facebook, You Had Me Podcast, or by email, contact at You Had Me at Bigfoot.com. Now, your hosts, Tom and Dustin. What's the one place you would not want to encounter a ghost? Oh, uh, at the proctologist's office. Why is that? Do I have to answer that question <laughs> on the podcast? You asked me last week or in the last episode how many times I've been fingered by an alien. By an alien, yeah. Have I ever been purred by an alien? So there's and your answer. And yet you're afraid to talk about ghost fingers? Well, at least with the alien, you see it. You know it's going. <laughs> <laughs> You were, su- you were surprised by a... Uh, what do they call the uh, succubus? A the succubus, female? an incubus? Yeah, succubus, yeah. Is Yours that the... is probably an incubus. <laughs> <laughs> My wife's going to be listening to this. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, all right. Welcome to the show. Today we're very excited to have a gentleman by the name of TJ from Blue Moon Paranormal Ghostbusters out of Tennessee. He's the host of a podcast called Paranormal Asylum, and you can find him at Paranormal Asylum on Twitter on Mixcloud.com slash Paranormal Asylum. He is actually branching out into an interesting thing uh, where he's doing a small business called Paranormal Adventures, uh, where they're going to do events and all sorts of cool stuff, and I'm sure he's going to tell us all about that. I'll make sure he brings it up and gives you all the pertinent information. I'll make sure we link everything on the on the web page as well. TJ, welcome to the show. Hey, yo. I don't want to keep you all night or anything. We'll try to keep this short and sweet for you, but it really all depends on your answers. Hopefully they're informative while at the same time being, you know, within whatever time frame you need it to be. Yeah. And like you said, you've been a uh, paranormal investigator down in Tennessee. Uh, do you want to tell talk a little bit about the name of your group, some of the people that are in your group? Yeah, um, I actually started the group back when I lived in Lexington, but really couldn't, or Lexington, Kentucky, sorry, um, but really couldn't get anybody to join it or couldn't get anybody interested uh, for some reason in that area. Uh, the name of the group is Blood Moon Paranormal Ghostbusters, and since I have moved down here to Nashville, we've been a lot more active. I have five members on my team right now. I have my fiance. I uh, have my aunt, um, who also kind of live with me in the same apartment, so it's kind of easy to get up with them and say, hey, do you want to go go something? They're like, sure. <laughs> so, and uh, I've also picked up um, an actual uh, medium psychic, she's pretty cool, and uh, got two other uh, investigators, one of them is a seasoned investigator, he's been going on about 10 years. And the other one is a newbie. I'm still training her how to do the proper techniques on investigating. Okay, well, we can we can actually segue right into that because one of my questions was going to be what equipment do you use? Which ones do you prefer? Because I know a lot of different groups like to utilize the K2 versus the e, or the EMF okay. versus the uh, all the different pieces of equipment. So if you want to talk a little bit about kind of the equipment and techniques that you like to use on some of your ghost hunts, I think that would be interesting to a lot of people. Yeah, um, well, of course, we utilize the um, audio recorders. That is by far the best piece of equipment. I don't care how much technology comes out or, or new technology, new techniques, whatever. The EVP is all, all the time what I fall back on. So we do at least two audio recorders running at all times when we're doing investigation. Uh, we usually have a K2 meter, but as you know, sometimes those can give off uh, false readings, especially if you happen to turn, not turn your phone on to uh, airplane mode or you get close to it with another piece of equipment that would basically 
called the page the KQ to go off. Here recently, I actually made a SLS camera, like the ones that you see on Ghost Adventures that carry it around. There's a portable, mine is not yet. Um, and I've actually had good results with it. I uh, used it at Ashmore Street this past weekend and was actually able to catch two um, apparitions on the SLS camera. And I've also used it at a funeral home in Lynchburg, Tennessee. And I was able to catch some apparitions there as well. It's just basically another tool to use to say, hey, we got the CCP, we got, you know, maybe a K2 spike, or we got a picture of a mist or something. Oh, yeah, and we also got the stick figure standing out there. So it, it's a pretty cool piece of equipment. Uh, th- this is Dustin, by the way, um, just so you know who's talking when. Uh, what's the, as far as the um, audio recorders, uh, what's the the best evidence you think you've gotten uh, using the audio recorder? Using the audio recorder, uh, <laughs> I have gotten a ton of it. Um, last time I went to South Pittsburgh, we actually got to test that. And we got the EVPs from it, like F U, get the F out, stuff like that. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm also a pharmacy tech by trade in my real life. One of the first times I went to Oaks South Pittsburgh, I used that as a tool to get the, the spirits or the apparitions or whatever you want to call them to, to come out and talk to me. And I actually got a uh, EVP that says I want the drugs because I was asking if you need help, are you in pain, anything like that. And I got an EVP that said, uh, I want the drugs. And I think by far that is the, the piece of audio that really stands out in my mind. A class, that's all years I've been doing this. Class A answer and you back EVP. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it is, definitely. Can you, for the sake of anybody listening, explain just very, because we know, I think a lot of people recognize what the EVP is, the voice recordings and EMF and cameras and how those things work. But as far as K2, what does that actually register? What does that actually pick up? Well, it picks up magnetic field in the air or close to the device. The the closer the field gets to the K2, the more lights that you'll see on it. It, um, And if there isn't anything there, it basically stays on the first green light, but has the the energy or whatever it is moves towards the K2, it'll start getting a higher green light, then yellow, then orange, and then red. And a lot of times you've got to be careful, especially in places that have electricity, because it will also pick up readings off of the electrical outlet if the, if the wire is not properly insulated, sometimes it can pick up readings off of lamps or lights or anything like that. So you got to be really careful about where you use it and where you set it down at. Very cool. The Now, with the EVPs, do you use digital audio or do you use original standard cassette tape audio? I use digital audio. I have dabbled with the standard cassette tape audio, but I still think the digital picks up the best because with the standard tape audio, it actually makes its own noise or it generates its own noise. So sometimes that can also be misconstrued as an EVP, okay. especially if that's what you're looking for. Yeah, they're easier to upload and manipulate and kind of hone yeah, in on stuff. Definitely, yeah. All right, so what, what actually got you into paranormal investigation? That's kind of the million-dollar question. I don't think a lot of people answer. A lot of people give, you know, your dime a dozen answers <laughs> of, oh, well, when I was a kid, I something scary was at the end of my bed. But sometimes people have really interesting, yeah. those moments where they realize that, hey, let me, let me figure this, let me see what's going on here. Do you have a... Uh, yeah. Do you have an interesting origin story? I've always had kind of weird things happen around me, I guess you would say. When I was five years old, uh, me and my dad had gotten into a fight about something. I can't remember even what it was. And I was in my room, like, upset about it. And um, I remember his dead brother, which had been dead four or five years at that point, just appearing at, at basically the end of my bed saying, hey, you know, your dad is just being bad. He, he has to teach you right from wrong, and this and that. Don't be mad at him. Don't be upset. Whatever. And then later on, when I was a teenager, when my grandpa passed away, I had this little, um, like, 
desktop fan that I uh, had set on my nightstand that I sleep with because I sleep with a fan every night. Well, to this, like the day of his funeral, again, I was upset and the fan kept falling off of the nightstand hitting me on the top of the foot. And then they were falling off the nightstand before. And I can't tell you how long it had been sitting there and it never even moved never vibrated, nothing. And what makes it even weirder is the last time that it moved off of the nightstand and hit my bed. It actually hit the middle of my bed, so it would have had to went over, it went over top of my leg and landed in the middle of the bed. So it had and a little bit of air underneath probably it. Probably about the time, the same time the ghost hunting shows started coming on TV. So I started watching them because it got me curious as to why the fan had done that. And it didn't, the fan didn't stop falling off of my dresser until I said, okay, Papa, I know you're all right. <laughs> and then after that, it was fine. That's so that's kind of what got me curious about, well, could there be another realm? Or could there be life after death? Whatever it is, whatever you think there might be. I mean, I'm still looking for the answer. That's why I'm still a paranormal investigator. I just, I think it's going to be a lifelong journey, basically. Yeah, that um, that was actually going to be one of my questions was uh, along the lines of what exactly do you think ghosts are? That's a, that's probably one of the most diverse answers that you get in this particular field of what people think they are. Yeah, well, I look at it as from a scientific aspect of it, if you if you are a physics major or you've ever had physics, you know that energy cannot be created and it cannot be destroyed. So if you look at it that way, you're like, okay, where does all this energy that my consciousness in my body, where does it go after we pass away? Well, that's what I'm trying to find out, if we can figure out where it goes or what form it takes something along the lines of that. Yeah, there's a lot of really interesting stuff that comes up once you start digging into quantum physics and all those mm-hmm. t- sort of things, what you had just mentioned, yes, too. And they yes. open up the door to a lot of really interesting different theories that can actually go into this particular field. What What are your family and friends? Obviously, I know you said your fiancé and your aunt are, are both part of your team. What do your other family members, your friends, think about this particular hobby? A lot of them are cool with it. I mean, a lot of them get freaked out when you show them some evidence that basically, I guess, in their mind, clicks the light bulb and says, hey, there might be something that I don't know about. I've not had any negative feedback personally given to me about doing paranormal research, but uh, I'm sure it's out there. I'm sure people think I'm full of BS sometimes. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> um, for the most part, everybody seems to have a good Okay, Interesting. I remember when I was, uh, I had been doing it for a couple years and a friend of a friend had gone on a hunt okay. with me and he had said, I don't know whether to brag about it or not, or is this going to, you know, or uh, is this going to get me laid was his actual question. And I said, I couldn't tell you. I don't know. <laughs> That's, uh, yeah. it's just, I'm sure it just depends on the person you're telling. And I, I always, I guess I'm always just a little curious about that, about other other people how their family and friends are if they're receptive to it or not my dad was he was a minister he was not receptive uh-huh. to it at all <laughs> he always told me he said you know you're not he's like you're not messing with you know dead people you're not messing with this you're not me-. he said you're messing with demons uh-huh. and i said okay well yeah. that's i mean that's definitely one theory and then i remember watching paranormal activity and it was a demon in the movie and i said is that what he was i was like now i'm and then i retired from ghost hunting at that point but i never i said i would never do it again yeah they i remember thinking that was uh i remember thinking it was ridiculous when he said it but then when i started to see all this other stuff i thought well maybe he was on to something now with yeah. with that I'm, being said i'm sure I've, i have heard that but, you know you're not messing with ghosts you're not messing with people you're you're messing with demons you better be careful or this and that, but more times than than not, when people know that you do it, they also tell you their own story, now, or, or ask you your opinion about what you thought about something. 
something might happen to them. Now, on what Tom's talking about with demons, which is the discussion that me and him have a lot, actually, uh, when we're not recording is spirits being demons or, or are they, you know, innocent people trapped on Earth. What's your opinion of that? How, how much do you think the stuff you run into is demonic versus maybe the old, uh, oh, they're trapped here with unfinished business kind of deal? I think there are demons out there. I don't think they're as common as people make them out to be. Um, I think a lot of times, I look at it this way. If they were a bad person in life, they're probably going to be a bad person in death. If they were a nice person in life, they're probably more than likely going to be a nice person in death. Now, that's the way that I look at it. If I go and I'm researching somewhere and I get all those mischievous activities and whatever, I always talk it up to say, hey, you know, somebody who's just been mischievous or, or whatever, kind of get a ride about the people, you know, coming there, talking to them in the dark, trying to make them say their name and knock on the wall and this and that, which, by the way, is definitely what I would do if I went if I pass away and somebody tried to come and talk to me. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to. I don't, I don't want to spend the afterlife knocking on on wood or saying my name or talking yeah. about. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I don't think that I have run across a demon personally. I mean, I possibly could have through my research. I haven't ever been able to pinpoint and say to somebody, "This is a demon. This is what a demon does." This is how a demon reacts. I think I am coming very close to it uh, with researching this um, funeral home at Lynchburg because the teenage son actually used a Ouija board in his bedroom. And I think he's opened a portal and they don't really know how to close it. The, their um, idea of closing it is just to basically screw the closet shut with the Ouija board in it, um, which I don't think is really working because a lot of times you can get audible growls or, or growling when you get your EVTs. So I think there's a little bit, something of a little bit more devious and possibly demonic at that place, but I just haven't investigated it enough to be able to say yes, but it's something there that is demonic. I wonder how you'd go about testing that sort of thing. Uh, that I'm not sure of. Uh, like I said, I don't have a whole lot of background in dealing with demonic entities. Like I said, I think this is the first one I've probably run across that might possibly be a demonic in a, uh, entity. I do work closely with Rutherford County Paranormal uh, Investigations. They are also here close to Nashville that are out of uh, the town of Laverne, Tennessee. The guy, uh, Mark Walsh, he's the founder. His wife, Cindy, she is more versed in dealing with the good, the evil, things like that because she is like a, a physical medium, I believe. When we're able to pinpoint something for sure, um, I will probably call upon them to, to help me try to get rid of it or try to contain it more than what it what it is right now. That's wild. Yeah. Just while we're talking about crazy investigations, what what do you would consider? What would be your uh, most notable investigation? You know, what where where were you at? What was the location of it? What's the kind of the story behind it? My most notable would probably be uh, Old South Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh, Tennessee. You've seen it, I'm sure, on all the ghost hunting television shows. It's legit. I, I mean, they may alter stuff for TV. But you can go in there. I've went in there numerous times. I think I've been in there at least seven times now. I've gotten a partial apparition that showed up on the DVR. The whole night, the whole third floor of the place was just like lit up with activity. You hear people dragging furniture, slamming doors, conversation. Uh, we had a K2 in the middle of the floor. It was taped out the whole night. They used it so much that the next morning we had to change the battery. <laughs> I have been bum rushed by spirit out of, out of one of the doors on the third floor. I have gotten a picture of a six foot shadow person on the second floor. So it, it's not really one investigation per se. It's, it's numerous investigations, but it just keeps adding to the evidence 
that one well, location? I've, I've never went there and knocked off any, not knocked off a piece of evidence. I mean, even if it's just an EVP, but sometimes you can go in there and take the place and stay in. You'll come home with your EVP. They've been talking to you the whole time you've been there. <laughs> now, is there is there a location that you've ever investigated that you will absolutely not go back to? <laughs> That's a good one. I haven't been the one yet. That's fair. Um, I think if I ever go to Bobby Mackey, as much stuff as I love seeing, I'm going to have to go there because there's so much black negative thing i think it would be a one and done i don't think i would ever go back <laughs> Bobby Mackey, well, if you can get me to go there in the first place funny you mentioned that because bobby Mackey is actually my uncle as a kid i used to go in bobby Mackey's before they would open my my father would take me in there before they'd open they had the mechanical bull and i'd be in there as a little one you always kind of felt something and uh, the thing with bobby Mackey's is he actually does not believe it my aunt she really believed in that stuff full full go but yeah they say that's she she believed it till the day she died that there were some mean things going on in that place <laughs> yeah is there have you had a moment i know you said a couple about you know being rushed by ghosts a lot of people like myself i i still don't know i haven't had this moment yet and i did it for i did ghost hunting for about a decade and i still have instances where uh, i question it have you had that moment where you you can definitively walk away from it and you can say i believe in ghosts i know they're there have you have you had that moment what was your first moment that you realized that do you remember my first moment um, was actually the first time I ever went ghost hunting. I went to Waverly Hills in Louisville. I really didn't know whether to believe it or not, whether the stuff that happened to me previous, like in my childhood, was just all in my head or something, something I, that I wanted to be true. But as much stuff that happened when we went to Waverly Hills, I, I, I can't deny it. I really can't. And even before I privately investigated Waverly Hills, I went to one of their haunted houses. And like, when you pull into the parking lot, you see the whole side of the building. Well, to go up to the haunted house, you gotta walk up a little embankment around the side of the building to go in to the the entrance for the haunted house. Me and probably like 50 other people standing out there. And out of one of the windows, the whole, the whole window was covered with vines. There's this bright ball of light that comes from behind the vines, turns out of the window, floats in the air, and goes back through the vines again. Fifty yeah. people saw it at the same time. And I really didn't say anything because I just thought my eyes was playing tricks on me or, or something. And then I started to hear people around me saying, did you just see that? <laughs> what was that? You know, so then we all started talking, and, and everybody's story was the same. Like, you know, they seen the ball of light and come through the pond, and they don't know how it done that. And then when I finally got to go back and do a private investigation, I seen shadow people. Um, I seen mist in the middle of the uh, the hallway, and it wasn't a white mist; it was a purple. I'm like, how the crap do you get a purple mist <laughs> in a place that there is no power? <laughs> well, there wasn't any power on the, on the floor that I've seen now. That was... And um, do what now? Oh, I was going to say, that was Waverly Hills, right? Don't, do you have to pay... Yes. Was it like 100 bucks to stay the night there? Yep, 100 bucks a person, and you have to have about 10 people because um, it's a $1,000 minimum. Oof. Now... Yeah. It's, it's kind of crafty, but it, it's worth it. And then, like, I guess it was like 4 o'clock in the morning or something. We was getting ready to go back to the hotel. Me and my friend Gina, we were, the, at the time, we didn't know when we were the only two people left in the building. Heard this big crash. Sounded like something, like, took a, a ball back to, like, a, a piece of metal or, or something like that. And we, we went down, checked out, nothing. The only thing we could think of, now, there was a metal sink about three to four doors down from where we were standing. That made the same sound, but there was nothing laying up against it. There was nothing in it. I mean, there's no way that that noise could have been made 
with what we found because the sink was just there by itself. There wasn't anything laying up against it, anything like that. And later on, the people that told us, that was with us, told us that they had heard the, the crash sound all the way outside in Waverly Hills is a big place. That crash was so loud that it actually shook my insides. <laughs> wow. And we we stood there and looked at each other for like a minute and we were like, what the f***? Like, for the f***? All that. It, it's crazy. I mean, I didn't, we don't know how to explain it to this day and that was six or seven years ago. I know I asked if there's any place you would never want to go back to, but what, and maybe you just covered it with Waverly Hills, but where, what's the um, location that you were probably the most scared of, the investigation that you probably got the most scared at? Or the instance in which you were the most scared at that location? Like, what was your, I just crap my pants moment? Um, well, I come from Bible, Kentucky, and there is a town called Waverly Hills, and it is a town called Prestonsburg. Is a private residence there that they still have this like slave quarters that's intact. It's on the National Registry, all that stuff. I actually am about 95% sure that I got touched by something. And it's not like, okay, something cold is touching me. No, it's like ice cold, like below zero type. A feeling. I mean, I don't know really how to explain it. And to beat it all, it was hot at the time, and it went through two shirts. And it, it was like on the small of my back, and I really do not know how to explain it. But I'm pretty sure on the easy piece, I was squalling because I didn't know what the crap just had went on. Because my back had, had literally gotten it felt like somebody put like a block of ice on the middle of my back and, and I could not explain it. It was and that? I was standing like in, like on a stairway. I wasn't even close to anything that would have been cold or anything like that. Now, was that a quick sensation? Was it like, like if I was to put my hand into Tom's back, was, was it like that, like real quick and, and gone or was it, did it stay there for a while? Um, it stayed there for a few seconds, but it basically just felt like somebody took their hand and placed it on, because it felt like fingers. And oh, so you could like the feel like the, back, you could feel the in front of the hand. Cold. That's crazy. Yeah, that would be, you know, that would be the place I would never come back to. <laughs> <laughs> I think I went back after that, but no, I was more aware of my family. Yeah. This one I did. Well, that's why you do the paranormal investigating, and I sit behind this microphone and talk about it because <laughs> because that would have been my uh, I just crap my pants moment. That would have been your first and last hunt. Though. Yes. <laughs> All right. So I think this is the most important question that I think we're gonna ask. I know it's the last one that we have mm-hmm. planned at least, and I think it's the most important. <clears throat> Of all the ghost shows that are on TV right now, <laughs> which one is the most accurate in your opinion? Current ones or ones well, that and, and, are already off the air? <laughs> yeah, we can include the ones that are off the air. Um, I think the most accurate was the original one that, that Taps had. Okay, so I the original think, yeah, Ghost Hunters the, with Grant and... The early ones, not the later ones after Grant left and all that, but, but the earlier ones when they would actually go into places that had not haunted. Yeah, I was always a big fan of Grant, and once he left, it was I wasn't really as interested in it. And, and what's his name? Brian Harnois. He was by far my least favorite character on that show, and I'm not afraid to say that. And yeah. I've said it to his face before. He and then he was replaced with Dustin, which wasn't a huge step up. But yeah, that was you're. you're I think you're right with with that choice. Or I think we're on the same at least the same page as far as Ghost Hunters, the original, being the, the most accurate. Yeah. But which one's your favorite That to include the stuff that's been off the air? My favorite is, right now, I watch mostly Ghost Adventures or The Dead Files. The one I like to turn on and laugh at is The Ghost Brothers. Yeah, those guys are pretty uh, funny. They're just like, they go in there all big and bad, <laughs> and then something will always make their gone. As soon as there's a moment, they're out of there. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm a go- I'm a Ghost Adventures guy. I feel like the Ghost Adventure guys are pretty. I don't, but I don't know. I just feel the, like well, 
see, here's my thing. I'm not super crazy about ghost adventures, but I, I can appreciate what they're doing. And they do say a lot of funny things. They do a lot of funny things. Um, but they, I, I've, I guess I've just never been that into regularly following them or watching every episode. I'm a ghost asylum guy. I really like that show. Yeah. And then Paranormal Lockdown, I like their little, their little ghost yeah. box that talks to them. <laughs> but that guy, yeah. Paranormal, is that the one? I think, I think out of all the current ones, Paranormal Lockdown is probably the most credible right now. Is which one? Out of all the current ones. Paranormal Lockdown. Uh, Paranormal Lockdown. Paranormal Lockdown. Who's the guy that left Ghost Adventures? Is that his show, Paranormal Lockdown? Did somebody leave Ghost Adventures? Yeah, yeah. Nick Golf, I he think. Was, he was, yeah, Nick Golf. He, he left um, Ghost Adventures. I think it was some kind of uh, argument or, or something that him and Zach didn't agree upon. Yeah. Something to that effect. I, I'm not really entirely for sure on that, but... I'll be honest, Zach, um, that Zach guy, he seems like the kind of guy you'd want to argue with. Like, just something about him is very abrasive, but I think that's part of his charm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah kind of, it's kind of like you, you know, If you go in these places and you're on the all, man, you're, you know, kind of do this and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you're going to get something. It might not be what you want it to be, and they very well can knock the crap out of you if they want to. But you're gonna get something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that Zach or the, not Zach, um Nick uh that Nick guy, he went on, he's he's doing that paranormal lockdown and the ghost of Shepherdsville. And they re- just redid Ghost of Shepherdsville yeah. for a second season. That show yeah. I think that's gotta be the bottom of the barrel for credibility. <laughs> the, I the, think so too. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know, the do you want to do a quick plug for your for your group your podcast and any other plugs that you want to do now's the time you can catch my podcast which is paranormal asylum i try to upload one podcast weekly uh, at the longest by weekly uh it is on mixcloud um, www.mixcloud.com slash paranormal asylum and uh, you can look that up on Facebook as well and uh, I'm also starting a paranormal adventures event management my company which our first event is going to be November the 3rd and November the 4th in Lynchburg, Tennessee at the funeral home that I've talked about on the podcast with you today and um, look at the Facebook page, um, Paranormal Adventures, and if you're interested in getting tickets for that, you can purchase them on the Facebook page. And you can also look up my um, Paranormal group, which is Blood Moon Ghostbusters on Facebook, and also on YouTube. And you can see what we've been into, and we kind of get a little creative sometimes. Um, we're getting ready to go back to the Lynchburg Funeral Home again um, this Saturday. And we're actually going to set up a mock funeral, which we are going to record and have it on YouTube and Facebook and all that good stuff and see if we can get any different activity or increased activity off of it. Very cool. Well, hey, look, if, if you ever make your way up to northern Kentucky or around this area again, uh, definitely reach out to us. Maybe we can get together and uh, you can scare the bejesus out of me at, a, at an investigation or something. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely will. I, I've got some places in Kentucky that we can go. I, I, would, I think it, I'd think i consider it scary you. Yeah. Sounds good. <laughs> All right, TJ. Well, I appreciate you coming on the show. I'll make sure I list all your all your different items of interest here, your Twitter, your Facebook, and the location for your podcast and your uh, business. I'll make sure I list them on the Twitter and on the Facebook as well, just for a little, a couple extra sets of eyes. And uh, like I yeah. said, we appreciate you coming on the show. No problem, guys. It was fun. All right, that was TJ from Blood Moon Paranormal Ghostbusters out of Tennessee. Again, it's at Paranormal Asylum on Twitter, mixcloud.com slash Paranormal Asylum, and his company's name is Paranormal Adventures. We'll make sure to link all the information on the website for you to go check him out. Uh, what would you think of that guy? 
seemed like a really cool guy. Yeah, that's why I said, like, listening to his podcast, <laughs> like, he wasn't, it, it's not like, it, it, he takes his, I mean, obviously he has a business. Yeah. Like, that's cool. Like, the dude is starting uh, his own paranormal business. Like, that's pretty cool. Well, you know what they say, you know, if you do what you love, you never work a day in your life. So, yeah. if the guy's... Yeah, I mean, that's hey, that's neat, man. That's very interesting. That, and that's a good idea. Staging a mock funeral at a funeral home. I hope we hear more from TJ in the future. I think he's an interesting dude. It's always kind of a toss-up whether or not somebody that you talk to about really any topic, but specifically these topics with the the cryptids, the aliens, and the ghosts, whether or not they're going to be a huge goober or if they're going to be a pretty decent human being. And this guy, he proved himself to be a pretty cool guy. I mean, he was an interesting dude, very knowledgeable, had a lot of interesting stories to tell. Uh, Certainly wasn't somebody who came off as, you know, one Bigfoot material. So on that note, what what do you give TJ? You give him one to five Bigfoots. Oh, I'll give him, yeah, five Bigfoots. Like when you, uh, you know, like you said, when you talk to people about paranormal, about cryptology, you never know what you're going to get. And the one thing is it never seemed like when we were asking him the questions that he was searching for an answer. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like you could tell he was speaking off of like, this is the experiences I had. So much of paranormal stuff is, you know, hey man, you may not believe this, but this happened to me. And people think you're nuts, but you know and sometimes they are. And sometimes, the <laughs> you know, but uh, you know, just listen to him talk. You know, you really get the you know that he is you know he's witnessed what he's witnessed, and you know. You know what's funny is in when you watch the ghost shows, uh, the ghost hunting shows specifically, some of the anything on Destination America where they talk about ghosts, they all use all these people who are just regular everyday civilian types who have a haunting. They all know all the buzzwords, all the keywords. You know, uh, well, he's a full-bodied apparition. Uh, he was a shadow person. He was a. Uh, we heard three knocks, which is the you know sign of the beast. Or yeah, prayer. well, the, the slight a slight to them. Um, religion and, yeah. and Christianity and uh, you know they know all these things which I mean yeah it could be indicative that they've done their research uh, and they've been dealing with it for so long that they know all these things but I think that's I think a lot of times some of these people are actually looking up that information like how some people uh, hypochondriacs when they go yeah. to the doctor they you know oh I you know I have this particular symptom and this one and this one and this one so they know better than the doctor so they're going to tell all the keywords so that their doctor will say well I'll, I'll be a son of a buck he's got cancer you know and that they'll they come in prepared with all these keywords so that they can, you know, collect disability or whatever, whatever their motive is for that particular doctor's visit. I think a lot of people do that with these ghost shows, maybe not because they're a bad person. Um, and maybe it's just because they want to be on the show. Maybe it's because the producers told them what to say. Maybe it's all scripted. I mean, any of those things could be true. But that, that was the thing about TJ. I thought um, he didn't use buzzwords. To, to make you feel like, oh, well, you know, he's using them because he he knows those are the words that I want to hear. He was using words in, in plain speak, like what you, you'd you expect to hear from somebody who deals with it on a regular basis. That was my take on TJ. I think he's a... I, I hope he continues to be a, a regular on the show. I hope he come. you know, I hope he visits often, calls in, and uh, tells us more experiences that he has as he goes. He's obviously not going anywhere. He's still in the paranormal investigation field and for the foreseeable future. I hope he comes and shares more information with us in the future. Absolutely. Thanks, TJ, very much for coming on the show. Thank you. Thank you, good sir. And as usual, do not forget to follow us on Twitter at You Had Me Podcast. And like us on Facebook, You Had Me Podcast. Email us at contact at you had me at bigfoot.com and check out our website www.youhadmeatbigfoot.com for our podcast news and links to reference material you can also go on there and send us all sorts of hate mail in the contact field until next time this is dustin <laughs> Big Z bag and sweet tea <laughs> tea bag and sweet tea <laughs>